Howdy, I'm B. Let me welcome you to the Beer Snobs Radio Show. We are a bunch of friends who are not experts, but we know we like in beer. Our definition of a beer snob is someone who just won't drink craft beer. So sit back and listen to us blind review beers on the Beer Snobs Radio Show. Calling all beer snobs. How you guys doing tonight? I am B, and to my left is... Hey guys, this is Brian with Beer Quest. And the cross table... Damon. Hey, and we right now have home brews with Hardyman. Hardyman, what'd you bring us this time? Hey guys, uh, this week I brought in, a, in another clone. Uh, this is actually a Firestone Walker double barrel ale. Have you guys had this before? This is the beer that started the show. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, double then. Barrel. Yeah, it's, it's B's favorite. Yeah, this is the reason... The Firestone double barrel was the reason why I wanted to do a podcast. All right, awesome. Then you will be the uh, critic to spotlight on this since you love this beer so much. All right, so the twist that we did is we just made the normal English, uh, you know, special bitters, English, you know, ESP. And what we did was in aging... We added in some oak chips that had been soaking in bourbon for six months. So get, get, go ahead and you know take a taste and uh, tell me what you think. Okay. Well, don't mind if the, I do. Look at the color. I mean, it's a really nice, like I would say, like a dark honey. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, when I had the uh, the whole five gallons of this together, it it actually turned red. It, it was so dark. It's like a decent head. See, see, I love and that smell. That bourbon smell, man. The bourbon taste is what gets me. I mean, I mean we got to the taste yet. I, I know, but you, I, I couldn't help myself. But you you, you, <laughs> you, you try it, and you get that nice little bitter kick, and then you have the bourbon mellow it out at the end. Yeah, it leaves a nice aftertaste. It, it, it is smooth, man. Th- this is the fireside beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good way <laughs> to end is, the day. This is so, I mean, it's so smooth, and it's, and it's, and I love the way that it's balanced. Like, the, the bitterness, and and I think it, the, the sweetness from the bourbon, it just, it, it's you're two for two, man. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, like the, the second beer you brought uh, on the show, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just blown away. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. Why did you have to soak the bourbon chips for six months? You know, I wanted to make sure that that the bourbon was like through and through, the like soaked into the wood. Um, you know, usually when you make a beer and you, you barrel it, I mean, you've taken a beer, put it into a barrel where the barrel was last used for what up to 10 20 30 years sometimes ah. so you know those really pick up the, the character of the bourbon and so that's kind of what i wanted to highlight you know we took a nice kind of a kind of a sweet caramely esb and just kind of gave it that kind of a smoky bourbon twist to it to you know just make it its own okay you've done well you've done well now now when you put the bourbon chips in is it like at a certain part of the process or yeah explain explain the, the entire process of how you go about something okay. like this perfect so so l- like a normal beer you brew the beer and you put it into fermentation and fermentation is when you take the sweet wort and you add yeast to it and the yeast just munch it on the you know the sugars and they turn that into active alcohol and so pretty much from there we racked that into what's called secondary fermentation that's when we pretty much move the beer into another vessel minus the yeast so we're trying to leave all that behind but move the beer over so you've got all the beer that it has the alcohol but there's no carbonation and that's when we added the oak wood chips and so it soaked it or the the wood chips soaked in the beer for about 10 days so like a week and a half okay and then we racked that into a keg and just carbonated it right away okay wow yeah this is a fun one uh this beer for five gallons, this one probably cost me, including the bourbon and everything, it's probably like 42 bucks. So, uh, question. My birthday's coming up. Can you make me a five-gallon <laughs> keg of this for my birthday? Let's see, you actually brought an example of the, the wood chips and bourbon, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what I did, uh, this is a new batch because uh, I had the empty bottle when I threw it into this beer. So, this is literally just oak wood <laughs> chips. Okay, bees drinking the bees bourbon. Bees drinking now. the bourbon. <laughs> it is straight up bourbon. It's ten- oh, that's some good bourbon. It's good. It's 10 year old bourbon. <laughs> really it is, good it bourbon. Really good. <laughs> Dude, you should try it. I don't want to try the bourbon. I'll you smell it. You should. It's really good. Oh, See, dear Lord. No, I, I, oh, this is too much. You, you need to try it. The smell is amazing. The smell is you, amazing. You really should try it. I'm going to keep drinking the beer. <laughs> So the, 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 the oh my god! I can't believe you opened it up. I want to suck it. one of these chips. It's pretty good. <laughs> Pull one out. Yeah. Well, like, see, <laughs> the cool thing about this is the the oak because you're adding it to the beer. It's been soaking in alcohol for months and months and months. Yeah, it's yeah. sterile. It's clean. Oh yeah. So you just toss it into the beer. So you know, even be drinking it. I'm gonna toss well, this into the beer. Well, now that one's got yeah. That, now that one's uh you know bourbon wood chips and bee backwash but uh, uh no, we're good no no i don't backwash <laughs> yeah i'm a professional drinker oh oh yeah 
<laughs> nice. Out of a jar. Huh? Yeah. yeah. See, out of a jar. He's a professional <laughs> drinker. <laughs> I don't. Let, I don't let. The, I don't let the obstacle or the the container stop me from drinking. That's how professional I am. <laughs> hey, as long as you don't let barriers, you know, stand in your way. <laughs> Uh, any anything else you could tell us about the process on this one specifically? No, actually, you know, this is actually a very, very easy beer to make. Um, it fermented for about two weeks. Um, we put it into secondary for another week and a half, another week on carbonation, and it was it was pretty easy. Wow, yeah. that's, it, that's good stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah, so it, it's just an example of how you can take an already awesome beer, put a little bit of a twist on it, and you know, make it something kind of different in its own right but still equally or you know equally as good or better because te- technically you you didn't really clone double barrel as much as like maybe the style but then you kind of went your own way anyway exactly so it's, yeah. it's similar to but the hardyman take yeah not exactly it's not like i aged it in a barrel like they do plus you know firestone's famous for blending almost every beer that they make yeah well you blended this one well so Again, this is this is this is great. Again, if I can get an order of this for my birthday, actually, which <laughs> which brings us to a point. I guess we we covered the last time we did this, which was uh, how much of it did you make in total? Oh, of this, uh, every beer I make, I make five gallons. So it was five gallons, and it cost you again how much? Uh, it's about forty two bucks. Forty two bucks for five gallons of beer. Yeah. Dear yeah. God. That's why a homebrew, dude, because you can make some really good beers. And, you know, right now I've got six beers on tap at the house and, you know, every night's a different beer and I just kind of rotate through them. Well, well, I, for one, look forward to taste them all. Awesome. We'll have a pool party. <laughs> I'm all about it. You got a pool now? I do. Awesome. Oh, yeah, he's moving. There you go. He moved again? Yep, Monday. Oh, where to? Well, I'll find out. <laughs> so, and, and now we have uh, the beer of the show. What do we got in front of us? Something lighter than Hardy Ben's, though. Uh, we should, you know what we should to be fair to this beer we should probably do some oh uh, palate cleanse. cleansing yeah because because i might judge this beer based on yours and that wouldn't be fair It'll automatically be good and who knows this uh beer might suck this is the beer snobs it probably will suck what's that smell the look the look is kind of it's just honey basic nice amber what's that smell though i'm smell. i'm smelling something on i don't know what it is heads eh, okay yeah i don't know what that is dude that's Hmm. I can't pinpoint that. It smells like a yeah. It's something. It's an additive. Flat. Wow. Very flat. Are you talking about the uh, mouthfeel? Yeah. 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 The the mouthfeel is not really there, but I mean, there's that flavor. I mean, it's not. It's, it's not just it's, the ending. It's it's all the way through it. It's a very it's a very sweet additive. Whatever it was. Yeah. I, mean, I think you're right. I think maybe it's honey. <laughs> yeah. That's what it comes off of just first first taste. Hopefully, it'll change a little bit when we get to the bottom of this thing. I don't know. Well, what kind of uh, aroma do you guys get off this? I, I get like a, a maltiness to it, but I get like some sort of something that's weird. Like it, I, I can't pinpoint it. I, I, I know what you're talking about. That one, it's one of those beers you get where it, <clears throat> it's one of those beers you get where you have that that weird note, that note that you just can't figure it out. It's like a brown note. Not, it's not, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know not, not brown, the brown not, note. Not legitimately uh, a brown note. The worst of all notes. But it's, it's no, a note. it does exist. <laughs> this is a note that I, I can't figure it out. I can't pinpoint what it is. Well, no, it's, it's, there's, there's something sweet. It obviously isn't something I don't think that, that was brewed for fla- the, into the flavor. I think it's, it's something that they kind of dropped in it uh, to finish the beer. And I don't think it really, it doesn't complement it too much. I, I, I might have actually, I've seen this before, kind of like that one blueberry beer where they just kind of dropped in the blueberry as an afterthought and it kind of ruined the beer and it overpowered it with this artificial blueberry taste. That's what it comes off. But I can't figure out exactly what the root of the sweetness is. Okay, uh, what, here's the most important question. Do you guys like it? It's, it's kind of okay. It, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's light. This, this tastes like something, this tastes like a session. This tastes like a hard session. This, this is something you're just going to drink a ton of. Uh, it's it's not offensive because that's really all you need for a good session is um, not too heavy, which it isn't. No, it's very light. And uh, you need it to have a flavor that can knock back easily. That's what I'm getting from this. It's it's uh, I mean, uh, but I'm not a session person. I'm just saying if you were to session this, this tastes like that would be the beer to do it with. I, I taste boredom. Yeah. I, well, I don't know about boredom. I, I guess I'm like. You know, honey, so a little bit of sweetness to it. Uh, some biscuity notes. You guys, get there's the not enough. Notes? There's not enough there. I don't get that. There's not enough there. I think maybe we should go for the reveal. And we got Lost Coast Brewery Alley Cat Amber. An amber. Oh, a full cream amber ale made with roasted caramel balls, richly colored, richly colored, medium body Alley Cat. Also, brightly cascade of hops. So 
it was probably the caramel, the caramel bomb that we took taste of. Yeah, that's caramel. Sweet but it just, it just, it, it's so weird that it would, it blended into the flavor, but then it killed all the beer flavor. Like, there's no beer, like real beer flavor in this. It's just sweetness. You know, I got, I got the biscuity notes. I didn't really get caramel. Did you guys get caramel? No, it's just sweet. Yeah. Just sweet. I, I had the sweet, whatever it was that sweet yeah. was, which had to be, has to be the caramel. Not like sugary sweet. No, like, no, no, just like sweet, just malty sweet, malty sweet. Yeah. yeah, like saccharin. Yeah, it's just it's like a fake sweet. That's what I was smelling. I dig the bottle, but I dig all their bottles. Well, yeah, let's 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 look at this bottle real quick. Yeah, it's just uh, Alley Cat. It's got a horribly mangled cat, very boxy drawn, uh, with an eye patch, and I think that's but is that, that a fez? I think he's wearing a fez. Yeah, I think so. He's like a, a sailor, very boxy or fez. And he's in a, and he's in a garbage can. He's not like in a port though. Like he's just like artistic. No, I, I, honestly, no. I think it's a fez. So he's and I think it's an eye patch. And I think so, he's in a, and he's in a garbage can. You know, his family just doesn't understand him. No, they don't. <laughs> his art's b- before his time. And he's just in a back alley in a garbage can, drinking a very frothy mug of what probably isn't this beer. And you know what? He's cool with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He listen. He was cool before cool was cool. He's a hipster cat, not alley cat. Uh, yeah. And this the bottle. Yeah, the 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 art is interesting. Oh, that's um, all a lost course. Lost yeah, course always has yeah. an art style. Downtown Brown's the best example of it. Yeah, and yeah, that's a that's great a good bottle. One. That is it's a very good basic, one. very basic for everything else. But I mean, the the label is unique, and I think that makes it stand out on the shelf. It's very iconic, you know. Yeah. Um. Did we get a price on this? One forty nine for a twelve ounce bottle. That's not bad. That's not bad. No, it's not. Yeah. I don't know if I'd pay it. <laughs> so, well, well here, here's the, here's a the question that matters. What did you think of the beer, Damon? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, recommendation. Um, yeah. I'll say uh, I've had some really good ambers. Uh, this is not one of them. Uh, it's not a bad beer. Uh, for again, if I was a session kind of guy, I would probably recommend it. I am not. I am a complex flavor, blended flavor beer drinker. That's the kind of thing I like. And the blending in this just it killed. The rest of the flavors, there's, there's there's nothing left but sweet, and that's disappointing. So I have to uh, not recommend this. I I would actually recommend this. You know, I I dig it for you know for for a lot of people. This is a good lawnmower beer. You, you know, I I'm gonna go. If there was any way to be nonplussed, I would. But I would say, due to the past performance of other Lost Coast beers, Downtown Brown, this isn't bad. And I would recommend it if you were in a place where you need to find an amber and you can't find anything else. I mean, if you can't, if you can't find shit, not that. See, now I'm going to a cop out of a reason. So I'm going to say, yeah, no, well, I don't recommend it. Fuck it. If I have yeah. to cop out, if I have to give a reason why to buy it, that's no, no, no. the wrong reason see, to do fair. it. So, no, I, I gave, I gave my reason like saying, you know, it was, it'd be good as a session, but me personally, cause this is a personal vote, a personal recommendation from us. I can't recommend it. I can't because it's 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 like a fucking soft drink. It doesn't taste like a beer. It tastes like a soft drink. I think I can't, it tastes like a beer. It, it tastes it like a beer. It's just no, not a good beer. To me, it tastes like a sweet soft drink. <laughs> I could have to me like I haven't drink Pepsi in a while. Could have been a Pepsi for all I know. It was really too sweet, and then the sweetness overpowered the flavor, which is not a good balanced beer. Which is why I can't recommend it. But is it bad? No, no. A session person would love this, but I'm not recommending it. Well, the reason I said I liked it and because I, I mentioned it was it's a good lawnmower beer is because I'm kind of moody when I drink. Not that <laughs> not that I have mood swings, but I will choose what I'm going to drink based on my mood and based on, you know, what I'm doing at the time. This, you, basically, what you're saying is there is a there is a Hardiman mood that fits this beer. Totally, totally, dude. Like Saturdays, like Sunday, you know, I, I would like to say mornings, but that maybe some people think it's too early. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're out, you know, doing some like hey, yard it's early work, enough for mimosas, right? Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it, but it, if you're doing like a uh, yard work, you know, mowing the lawn, but, you know, cleaning up, you know, that this would be a good thing to drink when you're out in the sun. You know, it's it, like you said, it's a session beer. It's not going to dominate. It's not going to put yeah. you on your ass. You can keep doing what you're going to be doing. Yeah. What is the, the alcohol? Content? It's 5.5. 5.5? Yeah. A little That's heavy right. for a session. A little, a little high for a session, but it's all right. I, again, I... <laughs> If I had to pick with Lost Coast, I'm going downtown Brown. This one, I just don't think I'd ever go by again. Yeah, again, it's so, like so. My my lack of recommendation is should not tarnish uh, the image of the spirit. Just me personally, not my. No, style. no. If you're looking for a decent place to start for ambers, this is a good starting point. I'm just not a fan yeah. of this. I'd prefer yeah. to get a better amber. Like, I, I prefer stronger amber, more well balanced. Carl Strauss amber. There oh yeah, go. that's good. That's a good amber. Or you know, we'll just go back to drinking. Uh, the Hardy beer that Hardiman beer? brought. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, to be, not to be rude. Your, your beer kicked its ass. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we recommend the beer that you can't try. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's two to one, uh, two to one uh, against Alley Cat. So 
we have a beer of the month. The beer of the month was the Grimbergen Abbey Double. Guess what, guys? You should go out there and try that beer. And let us know what you think about it on our Facebook or our Twitter. That's right. For the entire month of August, our beer of the month. What's the Grimbergen Abbey Double? We thought, our, it was the, yeah. we thought it was the best beer we had all month long. We think you should try it, too. Thanks, guys. So, uh, I'm B from the Beer Snobs, and I'll see you at the bar. Hey, guys, this is Brian with Beer Quest, and the quest is only part of the journey. Q-W-E-S-T. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, y'all of the plug. Love uh, the feed us in. Calling all beer snobs, I am B, and you just heard one of our shows. Guess what else you can do? You can find us on the interwebs, at Twitter, Facebook, G+, and we're on the Stitcher Radio Network. Be our friend on our social networks and find out what we're up to and find interesting beer articles we're releasing. If you want to advertise with the beer snobs, you can contact us at marketing at thebeersnobs.com. If you want to give us beer suggestions, you can find us at info at thebeersnobs.com or any of the social networks you can reach us. And as always, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you.